ओम भूरभुव स्वत सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवस्दीन धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओम शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम discussing a very very important divine topic that is the real self this article was in the form of a lecture given on january 7 1903 at the golden gate hall in san francisco by swami ramatirtha a great advaitic vedantist he addressed like this the all powerful god in the form of ladies and gentlemen in a german folklore we hear about a man who lost his shadow there is a very strange thing a man lost his shadow and that man had to suffer for it all his friends deserted him all propriety left him and he was in a very sorry plight for it what will you think of a man who instead of losing his shadow loses the substance there may be hope for a man who loses only the shadow but what hope can there be for a man who loses the substance the body such is the case of the majority of people in this world most men have lost not their shadow but their substance the reality wonder of wonders the body is simply the shadow and the real self is the reality everybody will tell us about his shadow everybody will tell us anything and everything about his body but how few are there who will tell us anything and everything about their real self the real soul the real atma what are you what is the use of gaining the whole world and losing your own soul people are trying to gain the whole world but they miss the soul they miss the self lost 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 what is lost the horse or the rider the horseman is lost the body is like the horse and the atman the true self the soul is like the rider the rider is lost the horse is there everybody will tell us anything and everything about the horse but we want to know something about the rider the horseman the owner of the horse tonight we propose to know what the horseman or the rider the true self is that is a deep subject that is a subject upon which the philosophers of the world have been racking their brains upon which each and all have been trying their best it is a deep subject and it is hard to do justice to the subject within the short space of 1 hour or so still we shall try to make it as easy as possible 
by means of an illustration or story this subject was explained once to a young man of the age of about 12 or 16 and he understood it thoroughly in a short time if that boy of the age of 15 or 16 could understand it each and all of you will be able to understand the subject thoroughly provided you pay close undivided attention the method of exposition will be the same as was adopted in the case of that small boy once upon a time the son of an indian king came to rama in the mountains and put this question shwami shwami what is god this is a deep question a very difficult problem this is the one subject which all the theologies and all the religions propose to investigate and you want to know all about it in a short time he said yes sir yes swami where shall i go to have it explained explain it to me the boy was asked dear prince you want to know what god is you want to make acquaintance with god but do you not know that the rule is when a man wants to see a great person is he will have to send his own card first he will have to send to the chief his own address and name now you want to see god you had better send to god your card you had better let god know what you are the voice the voice said it is all right it is reasonable i will directly let you know what i am i am the son of king so and so living on the himalayas in northern india this is my name he wrote it out on a piece of paper it was taken up by rama and read it was not put into the hands of god directly but was given back to that prince and the prince was told o oh prince you do not know what you are you are like the illiterate ignorant person who wants to see your father the king and cannot write his own name will your father the king receive him prince you cannot write your name how will god receive you first tell us correctly what you are and then will god come to you and receive you with open arms the boy reflected he began to think and think over the subject he said shwami shwami now i see now i see i made a mistake in writing my own name i have given the address of the body only and i have not put upon the paper what i am there was an attendant of that prince standing by the attendant could not understand it now the prince was asked to make his meaning clear to this attendant and so the prince asked the attendant this question mr so and so to whom does this card belong the man said to me and taking up a stick from the hands of the attendant the prince asked him mr so and so to whom does this stick belong the man said to me well to whom does this turban of yours belong the man said to me the prince said all right if the turban belongs to you there is a relation between the turban and you the turban is your property and you are the owner then you are not the turban the turban is yours he said indeed that is so plain well the pencil belong to you the pencil is yours and you are not the pencil he said 
I am not the pencil because the pencil is mine. That is my property. I am the owner. All right. Then the prince asked that attendant, taking hold of the ears of that attendant, what do these, whom do these ears belong to? The attendant said to me, the prince said, all right, the ears belong to you. The ears are yours. As such, you are not the ears. Similarly, the nose belongs to you. As the nose is yours, you are not the nose. Then whose body is that? Just beckoning to the body of the attendant. The body, the attendant said, the body is mine. This body is mine. If the body is yours, Mr. Attendant, then you are not the body. You cannot be the body because you see that the body is yours. You cannot be the body. The very attendant, my body, my ears, my head, my hand, proves that you are something else and the body together with the ears and hands and eyes etc is something else this is your property you are the owner the master the body is like your garment and you are the owner the body is like your horse and you are the owner now what are you the attendant understood it so far and also concurred with the prince in saying that when the prince had put down on paper the address of the body and had mean that this address stood for himself the prince had made a mistake you are not the body not the ears not the nose not the eyes nothing of the kind what are you then? Now the prince began to reflect his and said, Well, well, I am the mind. I am the mind. I must be the mind. Is that so indeed? The question was put, put to that prince. Now can you tell me how many bones you have got in your body? Can you tell where the food lies in your body that you took this morning? The prince could make no answer and these words escaped his lips. Well, my intellect does not reach that. I have not read that. I know I have not yet read anything of physiology or anatomy. My brain does not catch it. My mind cannot comprehend it. Now the prince was asked, Dear prince, oh good boy, you say your mind cannot comprehend it, your intellect cannot reach up to that, your brain cannot understand this. By making these remarks, you confess and admit that the brain is yours, the mind is yours, the intellect is yours. Well, if the intellect is yours, you are not the intellect. If the mind is yours, you are not the mind. If the brain is yours, you are not the brain. These very words of yours show that you are the master of the intellect, the owner of the brain and the ruler of the mind. You are not the mind, the intellect or the brain. What are you? Think. Think, please. Be more careful and let us know correctly what you are. Then will God be just brought to you and you will see God. You will be introduced directly into the presence of God. Please tell us what are you. The boy began to think and thought and thought but could not go further. The boy said, my intellect, my mind cannot reach further. Oh, how true are these words. 
Indeed, the mind or the intellect cannot reach the true divinity or God within. The real self, the true God, is beyond the reach of words and mind. The boy was asked to sit down for a while and meditate upon what his intellect had reached so far. I am not the body, I am not the mind. If so, feel it, put it into practice, repeat it in the language of feeling, in the language of action, realize that you are not the body. If you leave this thought only, if you work into practice even so much of the truth, if you are above the body and the mind, you become free from all anxiety, all fear. Fear leaves you when you raise yourself above the level of the body or the mind. All anxiety ceases, all sorrow is gone when you realize even so much of the truth that you are something beyond the body, beyond the mind. After that, the boy was helped on a little to realize what he himself is and he was asked, a brother, prince, what have you done today? Will you please let us know the works or deeds that you have performed this morning? He began to relate, I woke up early in the morning, took bath, and did this thing and that thing, took my breakfast, re read a great deal, wrote some letters, visited some friends, received some friends, and came here to pay my respect to the Swami. Now the priest was asked, is that all? Have you not done a great deal more? Is that all? Just to see, he thought and thought, and then mentioned a few other things of the same sort. That is not all. You have done thousands of things more. You have done hundreds, thousands, nay millions of things more. Innumerable, innumerable deeds you have done and you refuse to make mention of them. This is not becoming. Please let us know what you have done. Tell us everything that you have done this morning. The prince, hearing such strange words that he had done thousands of things beside the few that he had named, was startled. I have not done anything more than what I have told you, sir. I have not done anything. No, you have done millions, trillions, quadrillions of things more. How is that? The boy was asked, who is looking at the Swami at this time? He said, I. Are you seeing this face, this river Ganga and that flows beside us? He said, yes, indeed. Well, you see the river and you see the face of the Swami, but who makes the six, six muscles in the eyes move? You know the six muscles in the eyes move, but who makes the muscles move? It cannot be anybody else. It cannot be anything extra. It must be your own self. That makes the muscles in the eyes move in all, in the act of seeing. The boy said, oh, indeed, it must be I, it cannot be anything else. Well, who is seeing just now? Who is attending to this discourse? The boy said, I, it is I. Well, if you are seeing, if you are attending to this discourse, who is making the oratory nerves vibrate? It must be you. It must be you. Nobody else. Who took the meals this morning? The boy said, I, I. Well, if you took the meals this morning and it is you that will go to the toilet and vacate, who is it that assimilates and digests the food? Who is it, please? Tell us if you eat and 
you throw it out it must be you who digest it it must be yourself that assimilates it cannot be anybody else those days are gone when outside causes were sought after to explain the phenomenon in nature if a man fell down the cause of his fall was said to be some outside ghost science does not admit such solutions of the problem science and philosophy require you to seek the cause of a phenomenon in the phenomenon itself here you take the food go into the toilet and throw it off when it is digested it must be digested by yourself no outside power comes and digest it it must be your own self the cause of the digestion also must be sought within you and not without you well the boy admitted so far now he was asked dear prince just reflect just think for a while the process of digestion implies hundreds of kinds of moments in the process of digestion in mastication saliva is emitted from the glands in the mouth here is again the next process of oxidation going on here is blood being formed there is blood coursing through the veins there is the same food being converted into carnatic muscles bones and hairs here is the process of growth going on in the body here are a great many processes going on and all these processes in the body are connected with the process of assimilation and digestion if you take the food it is you yourself who are the cause of respiration you yourself make the blood course through your veins your yourself make the hair grow you yourself make the body develop and here mark how many processes there are how many acts how many deeds there are that you are performing every moment the boy began to think and said indeed indeed sir in my body in this body there are thousands of processes that the intellect does not know about which the mind is unconscious and still they are being performed and it must be i that in the cause of all that it must be i that i am performing all that and indeed it was a mistake i made when i said that i had done a few things a few things only and nothing more a few things that were done through the agency of the intellect or mind it must be made further clear in this body of yours there are two kinds of functions being discharged there are two kinds of work being done in voluntary and voluntary voluntary acts are those that are performed through the agency of the intellect or mind for instance reading writing walking talking and drinking these are acts done through the agency of the intellect or mind besides these there are thousands of acts or processes being performed directly so to say without the agency or without the medium of mind or intellect for instance respiration the coursing of blood through the veins the growth of hairs etc people make this mistake this glaring blunder that they admit only those acts to be performed by them which are performed through the agency of mind or intellect all the other deeds all the other acts which are being performed directly without the agency of intellect or mind are disclaimed directly entirely they are entirely cast aside they are entirely neglected and by this neglect and by this mistake by this imprisoning the real self in the little mind identifying the infinity with the small brain people are making themselves miserable and wretched people say oh god is within me all right the kingdom of heaven is within you god is within you but that kernel which is within you that kernel is yourself and not the shell 
please think over it seriously reflect whether you are the kernel or the shell whether you are he that is within you or you are the shell that is without some people say oh sir i eat the natural uh, i eat and nature digest oh sir i see but nature makes the muscles move oh sir i hear but it is nature that makes the nerves vibrate mark in the name of justice in the name of truth in the name of freedom just mark whether you are that nature or whether you are the mere body mark you are that nature you are the infinite god if throwing aside all prejudice waving all preconceptions and casting of all superstitions you reflect over the matter discuss it sift it investigate it examine it you will become of the same mind as what you call rama standing for it you will see that you are the kernel the nature the whole nature you are most of you may have understood the drift of the argument but that boy that indian prince did not understand it thoroughly well he said indeed i have understood it so far that i am something beyond the intellect all this time the attendant of the prince asked sir make it more clear to me i have not quite comprehended it yet well that attendant was asked mr so and so where you go to uh, when you go to bed do you die or live the attendant said i live i do not die and what about the intellect he said i go on dreaming the intellect is still there and when you are in the deep sleep state you know there is a state called the deep sleep state in that state even no dreams are seen where is the intellect where is the mind he began to think well it passes into nothingness it is no longer there the intellect is not there the mind is not there but are you there or not he said oh indeed i must be there i cannot die i remain there well mark here even in the deep sleep state where the intellect ceases where the intellect is as it were like a garment hoisted on a peg hoisted on a post like an overcoat the intellect is taken off and placed upon the post you are still there you do not die out the boy, the boy said the intellect is not there and i do not die out this i do not quite comprehend well the boy was asked when you wake up after enjoying this deep sleep when you wake up do you not make such statements i enjoyed a profound sleep tonight i had no dreams tonight do you not make remarks or of that kind he said yes well this point is very subtle all of you will have to listen closely when after waking up from the deep sleep state this remark is made i slept so soundly that i saw no dreams i saw no rivers no mountains in that state there was no father no mother no no house no family nothing of that kind all was dead and gone there was nothing 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 there i slept and there was nothing there the this statement is like the statement made by the man who bore witness to the desolation of a place and said at the dead of night at such and such a place there was not a single human being present the man was asked to write out the statement he put it on a paper the magistrate asked him well is this i witness uh, well is this statement true he said yes sir well is this statement made on hearsay or founded upon your own evidence are you an eyewitness he said yes sir i am an eyewitness 
this is not based on hearsay you are an eyewitness that at the time mentioned on the paper and at the place mentioned on the paper there was not a single human being present he said yes what are you are you a human being or not he said yes i am a human being well then if this statement is true according to you it must be wrong according to us because as you were present and you are a human being the statement that there was not a single human being present is not literally true you were present there in order that this statement may be true according to you it must be false according to us because in order that there might be nobody there must be somebody must be somebody must be at least yourself present at the time so when you wake up after enjoying the deep sleep state and make this statement i did not see anything in the dream well we may say that you must have been present there was no father no mother no husband no wife no house no river no family present in that state but you must have been present the re- the very evidence that you give the very witness that you bear that you bear proves that you did not sleep that you did not go to sleep for had you been asleep who would have told us about the nothingness of that you are something beyond the intellect the intellect was asleep the brain was at rest in a way but you were not asleep if you had been asleep who would have made the blood run through the body vessels who would have continued the process of digestion in the stomach who would have continued the process of the growth of your body if you had really fallen into the sleep deep sleep state so you are something which is never asleep the intellect sleeps but not you i am something beyond the intellect body and mind now the boy said sir sir i have understood it so far and have come to know that i am a power divine and i am the infinite power which never sleeps never changes in my youth the body is different in my childhood the mind was not the same as i have now the body was not the same as i have now in my childhood my intellect brain body and mind were entirely different from what they are now doctor tell us that after 7 years the whole system undergoes a thorough change every moment the body is changing and every second the mind is changing and the mental thoughts the mental ideas which you entertained in your childhood where are they now in the days of childhood you looked upon the sun as a beautiful cake which was eaten by the angels the moon was a beautiful piece of silver the stars were as big as diamonds where are these ideas gone the mind of yours the intellect of yours has undergone a thorough wholesale change but you still say when i was a child when i was a boy when i shall grow up to the age of 70 you still make such remarks which show that you are something which was the same in childhood which was the same in boyhood which will be the same at the age of 70 when you say i went to sleep i went into the deep sleep state etc when you make remarks of that kind it shows that there is the true i in you the real self in you which remains the same in the dreamland which remains the same in the deep sleep state which remain the same in the wakeful state there is something within you which remain the same when you are in a swoon which remain the same when you are bathing 
when you are writing just the thing reflect just mark please are you not something which remain the same under all circumstances unchanging in its being the same the same yesterday today and forever if so just reflect a little more think a little more and you will be immediately brought face to face with god you know the promise was know yourself put down your right address on paper and god will be introduced to you immediately now the boy the prince expected that as he knew about himself he had come to know that he was something unchanging something constant something which was never asleep so he wanted to know what god is the priest was asked brother mark here are these true uh, trees growing is the power that makes this tree grow uh, tree grow different from the power that makes that tree grow he said no no it must be the same power certainly now is the power which makes all these trees grow different from the power that makes the bodies of animals grow he said no no it cannot be different it must be the same now is the now is the power the force which makes the stars move different from the power which makes these rivers flow he said it cannot be different it must be the same well now the power that makes these trees grow cannot be different from the power which makes your body grow it cannot be different from the power which makes your hair grow the same universal power of nature the same universal divinity or the unknowable which makes the stars shine makes your eyes twinkle the same power which is the cause of the growth of the body's hair which you call mind the same power makes the blood course through the veins of each and all indeed and then what you are what are you are you not the power which makes your hair grow which makes your blood flow through the your veins and which makes your food get digested are you not that power that power which is beyond the intellect the mind indeed you, you are if so you are the same power which is governing the force of the whole universe you are the same divinity you are the same god the same unknowable the same energy force substance anything you may call it the same divinity the all which is present everywhere the same the same you are the boy was astonished and he said really really i wanted to know god i put the question what god is and i find my own self my true atma is god what was i asking what did i ask what a silly question did i put i had to know myself i had to know what i am and god was known thus was god known <clears throat> the only difficulty in the way of realizing the truth is that people play the part of children you know children sometimes take a fancy to a particular kind of plate and do not want to eat anything except when it is served to them in the plates which have their fancy they will say i will eat in my plate i will eat in my dish i won't have anything in any other plate oh children see it is not this particular plate alone which is yours all the plates in the house are yours all the golden dishes are yours this is a mistake if the people in this world know themselves they will find the true self to be god almighty 
to be the infinite power but they have taken a fancy for this particular plate this had this brand what is done through this brand only that is done by me what is done through this mind or intellect that is mine and all else i want to have all else i disclaim i will have only that which is served, served to me in this particular plate herein comes selfishness they want to get everything done through this plate and to take credit for this plate they want to have everything accumulated around this little plate which they call particularly theirs that with which they have identified them identified themselves this is the cause of all selfishness all anxiety and misery get rid of this false notion realize your true self to be the all rise above this selfish egoism you are happy this moment one with the whole universe you are this is a mistake of the same character as that which the prince made the prince was put a catch question where is your place and he named the metropolis of the state that is my place oh boy that metropolis of the state is not the only place you have got the whole state the whole country is yours you live in this that metropolis that capital of the state while that capital is not the only place that is yours the whole state is yours this magnificent landscape these fairy scenes this grand himalaya scenery all this belong to you and not only that particular small town this is the mistake made by people the intellect or brain may be called the metropolis or the capital of your real self the atma you have no right you have no right to claim this to yourself and deny everything else this little metropolis of the brain this metropolis of the mind or intellect is not the only place you have got the wide world the moon the earth of the planets the milky ways all these are yours realize that just regain your birthright and all anxiety all misery ceases people talk about freedom people talk about salvation what is that that what is it that has bound you first if you want to be free if you want to get salvation you ought to know what is the cause of your bondage it is just like a monkey in the fable a monkey is caught in india in a very queer manner a narrow naked basin is fixed in the ground and in that basin are put some nuts and other eatables with the very queer manner a narrow naked basin is fixed in the ground and in that basin are put some nuts and other eatables which the monkey like the monkey come up and thrust their hands into the narrow naked basin and fill their hands with the nuts the fist becomes thick and it cannot taken out there the monkey is caught he cannot come out queerly strangely he is caught we ask what is that binds you first you yourself have brought you under thraldom and bondage you are the whole wide world a grand magnificent forest and in this grand magnificent wood of the whole universe there is a narrow naked vessel found that is the narrow naked vessel it is your brain the little brain narrow naked here in our some nuts and people have got hold of these nuts and all that is done through the agency of this brain or through the medium of this intellect is owned as one's own i am the mind is what everybody says everybody has practically identified himself with the mind i am the mind i am the intellect and he takes a strong grip of these nuts of the narrow naked vessel that is what makes you slave that is what makes you slave to anxiety slave to fear slave to temptations slave to all sorts of troubles that is what binds you that is the cause of all the sufferings in this world if you want salvation if you want freedom only let go the woe hold free your hand the whole forest is yours 
you can jump from tree to tree and eat all the nuts and eat all the walnuts and all the fruits in the wood all beings yours the whole world is yours just get rid of this selfish ignorance and you are free you are your own savior making a famine where abundance lies is it fair no it is not fair it is not becoming making a famine where abundance lies this thy foe to thy sweet self so cruel should not be so should not do this within thine own but buriest thou content within th thine own but buri buriest thou content thou makest waste and niggarding be not niggardly be not misery it is niggardliness to give away all the property and confine thyself into the few things in this little brain only you will see that this brain of yours will become of infinite power if you realize your oneness with the all that is what puts you in perfect harmony with the whole world oh, we can wait no longer we to take sip o oh soul intellect joyous we to launch out on trackless seas fearless for unknown shores on waves of ecstasy to sail amid the whirling winds though pressing me to that i thee to me o soul caroling free singing our song of god chanting our chant of pleasant exploration with laugh and many a kiss let others deprecate let others weep for sin remorse humiliation o soul thou please tell me i thee ah more than any priest o soul we to believe in god but with the mystery of god we dare not dally o soul thou pleasest me i thee sailing these seas or on the hills or waking in the night thoughts silent thoughts of time and space and death like waters flowing but we indeed as through the regions infinite whose air i breathe whose ripples here leave me or bath me o god in the mounting to thee i am my soul to range in my range of thee o thou transcend light of the light shedding so this is a big poem sail on march on the real self get rid of all this superstition the superstition of the body get rid of this hypnotism of the little body you have hypnotized yourself into this brain or body get rid of that sail on march on to the eternity the reality the true self passes to more than india rise above the body and you become all these you get a passage into all these all these realize yourself too so these are all poems now one more poem o sun and moon and all stars sirius and jupiter passes to you passes immediate passes the blood burns in my veins away a soul hoist in so this was the lecture given by swami ramatirth he was a great philosopher and a advaitic vedantist so he nicely make that prince understood the very nature of reality our atma is the reality so we have to understand with example so nicely swami ram tirtha explained to that prince so my dear friends i end this video here please like it comment and share the video and please subscribe my channel 
थैंक यू माई डियर फ्रेंड थैंक यू